Hey, well, hello everyone out there in YouTube land. This is your girl, Saida, the domestic handmaiden of distinction, coming as always to you live and direct. I hope all is well with everyone. I'm doing pretty good. I need a little rest, but I'm going to get through this video that I promised to do on Monday so that I can get some rest that I need. So um, please uh, forgive me because I, I might be looking down or at my notes uh, so that I can remember uh, everything. Uh, this is a tag that I'm doing. As you can see uh, from the uh, um, the um, title, I'm going to be doing a tag and the tag is named five frugal, no, excuse me, five expensive things that are worth the money. And this tag was uh, created by Yelena over at my Frugal Frugal Life. I believe her name is Yelena over at My Frugal Life. We did a tag uh, together before on the five, uh, how to save money and I forgot the name of the tag. But anyway, you know the tag, uh, how to spend less money, how to save money and spend less money, live something. But anyway, forgive me. I told you I'm tired. So anyway, uh, so uh, so it's just five uh, expensive things that are worth the money. Now, this is not an exhaustive uh this, the, the, the answers that I have or the responses, I should say, are not exhaustive, but I'll, you know, um, anyway, they're not exhaustive, but I'll do my best to stay concise or uh, uh, keep the video as short as possible. Um, God willing, God willing, I said, <laughs> amen. Um, so these are not in any particular order. So, uh, but the first one is tuition. Uh, tuition and or education and it's uh, what I have here is uh, this is not this is more about children than adults uh, I'm really talking about the investment that we should make in our children and or grandchildren um, and I'm not talking about huge amounts of money and or leasing or putting things on credit or anything like that but I'm just saying invest in their education that's basically what I what I mean um, and uh, so it's always good to do that for you know your children and your grandchildren, um, and this is not always financial. Uh, if your children are in a public school or a, a daycare or something like that, it is a good idea to invest your time also to volunteer your time, uh, whether that's heading up or spearheading uh, committees or meetings, or if you have different uh, skills or things like that that you can um, you know um, loan or lend in particular uh, areas that they may need. That would be awesome. If you're an attorney, you can offer you know some uh, pro bono. Um, services or things of that nature. So it's always good to invest in your children's um, education. Again, whether it's tuition, uh, you know, if it's tuition, uh, because all schools are not um, all created the same. So you might have to, sometimes you might have a need or a desire to put your children in a private school. So, uh, so if you have any other skills or, or whatever, it's a really a good idea for you to uh, volunteer though. So number two is the, the uh, number two thing, uh, and maybe expensive thing uh, that you can, um, that is worth the money is mortgage and or rent, you know, to lease a, a place to live. It's always a good idea for you and your family to have peace of mind, not to be concerned or worried about different, um, you know, unsavory practices or unsavory uh, elements in the, your environment. So it's really a good idea to, you know, put, live in a, a good neighborhood. And I'm not saying, uh, I'm not saying uh, live in a humongous mansion. That's not what I said. I didn't say anything about a humongous mansion where you have 13 bedrooms, but it's just you, your spouse, and those two children, and your pet. But you have 13 plus bedrooms. I'm not saying a humongous mansion. You can live in a modest, comfortable home in a very good neighborhood, you know. So that is really, really important because as far as um, your, uh, you know, your, your insurance uh, goes, if you live in a good neighborhood, your insurance premiums are, are lower, uh, you know. So um, what else? But again, it's really good to have peace of mind that your family is safe in your neighborhood and you have good schools and better resources also in better neighborhoods and I'm not saying again spend all of your money on uh, rent and mortgage or something like that but at least you know a, you know a chunk that you can afford in a good neighborhood so another thing number three is good furnishings 
it's good to save up your money for you to purchase fine furnishings for your home that last the test of time. Uh, try to stay away from furnishings that are poorly made and which you'll be purchasing them again, you know, in the following year. So you don't have to every re rebuy them year after year after year because that is just going to, you know, that's just a waste of money to, to purchase poorly, uh, poorly made furnishings uh, uh, to make to purchase furnish to purchase poorly made furnishings. Um, I would personally rather live in a home that's empty than to have uh, poorly made furnishings. I would rather save up my money purchase something very good, very good uh, furniture that's going to last, a, you know, basically almost a, a lifetime. You know, you just get it cleaned every year or every couple of years or whatever and do your own spot cleaning to maintain it. You're good. Um, uh, and, and good furnishings don't always come from necessarily, you don't have to go to, I'm not going to name the big names that I would, that's in my mind right now. I'm not going to name the big names of places, but you can, pe people also Donate those or sell those uh, items used as well. It's all you can always buy good furnishings used. All you have to do is have them professionally cleaned, and you're good to go. So, and you've saved a, a, a quarter of, 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 of you know of what someone the, per, the original purchaser or the original owner uh, paid for it. So that's a, a good way um, to. Uh, the one of the things that you know I would do for five expensive things that I uh, would purchase that I think are worth the money and that's good furnishings it's good to have nice things good things in your home that you don't have to continue to buy those things over and over and over again you don't want to and it's an embarrassment if you 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 have guests at your home and you guys somebody sits on something and that thing just kaputs you know or something you know so anyway or it's a danger because, you know, if somebody hurts themselves, that's uh, that's a danger. So number four, uh, home improvements uh, and services. Uh, home improvement repairs and, uh, and or services are uh, one of the five uh, expensive things that I think are worth it. It's a really uh, good um, to, and these services could be anything. It could be, um, like I said, home improvement and repairs. Um, and or services. Now that could be cleaning, could be child care, it could be uh, any type of personal service, uh, it could be even dry cleaning, but it's good to invest into that, take that those a few extra coins and invest it in that versus trying to go, go cheap and wind up having to spend that money plus that uh, more money on top of it. So this is a big one because if you hire a handyman now, normally handyman, not normally, let me not say that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So this is not, this is a general statement that does not apply to all. But uh, normally, uh, be, um, this, uh, this is a big one because if you hire a handyman without a contract or without a warranty, this could cost you more money in the long run. That's number one. It's going to cost you long, more money because if that person does not do the, the job that you requested, uh, it might have to cost you more money, they, you know, because nowadays everything is so high tech. If you could just get bring some, in somebody that really is not familiar with these things, they can ruin that uh, particular item or whatever. Uh, so number two, if you hire a friend or family member to repair or provide a service, and uh, and, and if not, and if everybody is not on the same page or everyone has a different uh, uh, expectation. This could be a result in a lawsuit or the death of a friendship. You know, sometimes we have a grandpa or uncle or bro brother-in-law that knows how to do the, do certain things, but because you didn't have a contract or you all you thought uh, he should have that person should have did this or they thought that you know something else. You know, if you not you don't have a meeting of the minds, which is a contract, you need to have a contract, something in writing, and both of you agree with what's in writing because these four walls or four sides of this contract is what, you know, is a covenant that brings you two together in an agreement to understand 
understanding uh, what it is that you exactly exactly what it is that you want or what your expectation is so but that is really you know very um, um, kind of sensitive or a personal uh, situation is sometimes it's good not to hire family uh, because when 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 fa come time family and business they don't mesh because you know that that, that it, it just doesn't mesh let me just leave it at that it sometimes it doesn't mesh it separates so you don't want it to be a death of that situation so you know just try to stay away from it you know depending on the relationship if you can be straightforward and forthright with that person and that person have a, a good understanding and is professional and whatnot um go for it but you understand what i mean you understand what i mean some of you understand what i mean so number three having a contract uh and um, service warranty uh or not having a, a contract or a service warranty may cost you more in the end. Um, they are well worth it. It's well worth it to have a, to pay for services that have warranties and that have contracts, not just something somebody said. And another thing, a, a good legal tip, although I'm not supposed to give law advice, legal advice, a good tip is if you have a contract, something that is written in on uh, paper, you cannot go and use a have a verbal uh, contract or to uh, amend that excuse me amend that uh, written contract with a verbal contract. Anything that you say verbally, then you have to go and just remake a whole new contract to have an addendum to add to that. You understand? So, and if you didn't, just leave it down. I'll explain it more. Um, I just don't want this to be too long. Okay. Thank you. Too. So anyway, so it's really worth it to have um, a contract and or a warranty. Those things, they cost more, but it's worth it in the end to protect your, you know, protect the things that you have and uh, whatnot. And um, uh, because of a personal relationship, uh, yeah, because of personal relationships, lawsuit and extra money could be spent if you don't have those things in place. And finally, number five is transportation. Number five, number five is transportation. Having a good motor vehicle that gives you peace of mind is important. So you don't want to worry about being on the road, you and your family, and all of a sudden, uh, some smoke starts coming out of the, the front or whatever and you know you guys are stranded or something like that or you your axle breaks or something happens and you have an axle you know whatever so it's really good to have peace uh, a good automobile is uh you know good to have a good automobile so that you have uh, peace of mind for you and your family and again i'm not saying a luxury vehicle i did not say luxury vehicle because luxury vehicles break down also you know but what i'm saying is a good stable automobile something that's reliable not a clunker you know you might have to spend a couple of extra dollars more than you know 500 to 500 dollars uh so anyway and then with that car you need also good insurance make sure you have good insurance because if anything happens to that car down the way uh, along the way you will be compensated for it and you can compensate somebody else if anything happens to their vehicle because of your negligence or, ac or accident or whatever like that um so also this also means having it serviced by a reputable and knowledgeable mechanic, not a shade tree mechanic, not a, um, what do you call those? Um, uh, an alley mechanic. That's what we call them. Alley mechanics or shade tree mechanics. Those that are just in their own garage or under a tree somewhere that you just go and have your vehicle maintained or, you know, the maintenance done. Don't don't do it. Go to someone who is reputable, knowledgeable, and professional. Somewhere where you can get a warranty uh, for the work that they have done. So yeah. Um, okay. So that will complete uh, my the tag that five expensive things that are worth the money uh, that I'm doing again. So and the uh, the person who created the tag or uh, or. Uh, spearheaded to tag her name is Yelena over at my frugal life I will put that information down in the description uh, box and I thank you so much for allowing me to participate Yelena I appreciate you uh, you always have some good tips and you're always spearheading some videos to help us uh, to remind us to have ways of say to save money and and things of that nature so 
you're a very good resource and thank you so much again for what you're doing and for allowing me to participate in this tag. So um, without uh, further ado, I will sign off because I need to go get some rest. But I thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, if I didn't make something plain or uh, I need to clarify something, please don't hesitate to let me know down in the comment section. And I thank you for, so please like and subscribe and comment and share this video. Let's make this go viral. <laughs> all right. This is the your girl Saida, the domestic handmaiden of distinction signing out for now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.